All right, so everyone seems to be going mental about hill climb tech, so I decided let's do a video roasting Andrew Feather's bike because wow, oh, wow, it cracks me this video so much. Now, Road CC makes some pretty B tech content, but this I reckon could be the worst content I've ever seen. So let's get into it. First of all, this is all just a disparate shill bike uh, video, and you may say, Charlie, you have disc brakes. Yeah, but you just can't lie that they're going to be slow on hill climbs, but apparently they're not. So let, let's let's have a little listen. And even TT bikes have turned their backs on trusty rim brakes. There has, up until now, been one place that has been a safe haven for rim brake lovers. That is, of course, hill climbing. We were slightly surprised then when three-time British hill climb champ Andrew Feather rocked up on his new disc brake bike. Andrew. Thanks for joining us. Can you talk us through your latest creation? I can. So, the frame, these, on Road TC recently, and it's certainly a very light machine. Is, was that your primary reason for going for this? I think, you know, um, disc brake bikes in general are becoming lighter and lighter. Mm -hmm. um, I think this frame weight is around 770, so it is really, really lightweight. The frame is generally more aero than previous iterations of the, uh, the old rim brake. Uh, frame obviously you've got the the area bit here and the area seat post so I think you know there are often certain parts of a climb where you are either going downhill or it's flat so those advantages will come into play yeah so when you're choosing your bike it's not all about what is the very lightest component it's about balancing that stiffness a bit of aero and the weight as well so obviously there's a lot of schmolker components right well so obviously that's just complete chat He's sponsored by Cannondale and they're like can you ride our disc brake bike and he was like well, yeah, you're going to give me a free one. So obviously it's not balancing aerodynamics. The average speed of the climb is 22 kilometers an hour, uh, maybe 23. They hit 40k an hour. Yeah, but like it's just obviously not quicker. So it's just chat. And like it really annoys me because it's not like no one's open about this, but everyone knows it. No one's like, oh, I just wonder why he bought a disc brake bike. So obviously he didn't. He just got given it. Um, he's been on Candale forever. That's fine. Just admit it. No one asks the pros. I'm like, oh, I wonder why all the pros are on disc brake bikes. Like, hmm, maybe they're all given disc brake bikes. So that's just a dumb comment. Then, okay, he's got some Schmolka stuff. You can't really complain about that. He's got a 3D printed mount. He's got power meter. Now, he could save weight on the power meter. Now, this is a rogue one, but I reckon... I reckon, actually, probably one of the biggest things you can do is if you go quark power meter, crack on the SRAM force, the SRAM red cranks, um, that's actually, like, one of the lightest setups possible. So I do think he's probably losing a little bit of weight there. I also think chain rings, he's on the rotor chain rings. He could be on carbon TI chain rings, which I think would be lighter. Um, again, it's always hard to tell because everyone just doesn't really publish weights of like niche components. Um, so yeah, I think those are kind of the big ones where I reckon that he's got big weight saving possibilities. Um, so yeah, the power meter we can see here, most of the time there's no real point. He's got a double setup at this moment, um, but that's mainly just because uh, he said maybe he's going to do it on the struggle, but he didn't. He ended up using, I think it was a 44 or 46 probably um, on the struggle because he's got big gas. Obviously he's on Jurious Di2, so there's some weight saving here. So a couple things. Jurious Di2, obviously very light. The cassette, I assume he's on a Jurious cassette, that is the lightest. You can't really 12 speed, hard to get light. You can use AliExpress, but it doesn't really work. But seat post, uh, he could use a Daramo seat post. He doesn't look like he is on one, so that is probably an area for some weight saving. I think the other thing that he can lose weight on is Hope calipers. So instead of using uh, the Shimano Jurious calipers, I'm pretty sure Hope calipers are lighter. Now, um, that is something that probably is pretty niche. Um, he's got his Jurious levers. Obviously, he could take the rubber bit off. I found when I did that was about 50 gram saving. So we, we're actually finding a decent amount. Again, here you can see he's gone on the old Dura Race. Wheels, he's on Hunt uh, tubular wheels. You can't get, you can get lighter. I found disc brake wheels, tubs on AliExpress for about 800 grams. And these, I think he said on 950. So there is some weight saving. Now the big one here, as we can see, is the pedals. Now these pedals are an absolute chonker. Now I would not be running these. You either go speed play, uh, and car like, and have the titanium spindles, which are like 77 grams each, which is good. But obviously the weight of the cleat is quite high. So what I would recommend um, is actually using the time pedals. Now, again, you can get these time pedals for they're called Costellos on AliExpress and they are light as well. They are way the same, but the cleat is a lot lighter. So again, most of this is just zero point watching. It just made me cry. Um, the chain, he's on a Durace chain, which is waxed. Um, so yeah, even Feather's using some marginal gains, which is, which is pretty big because this man often has not done the big marginal games. Now I'll get back to the whole disc brake chat. Um, and the thing I just want to finish this video off, because I mean, I think we'll conclude just before the disc brake chat when I get annoyed again. Uh, the weight savings, pedals, um, disc brakes, he actually uses carbon TI ones, but disc calipers, yeah, I think he could save some weight on. He could save some weight on his chain rings. He could use some carbon TI chain rings. They are mega, mega light. 
uh, we said pedals, that's more or less it. Oh, down row seat post, that is also somewhere where he could save weight, I'm pretty sure as well. So those are kind of the big things. And then his wheels, he could save a little bit of weight, but I reckon he could get this down to like 5.3. Um, it was 5.7 in the single wing setup. But anyway, we're gonna get this into uh, our rim brakes dead because wow, wow, this chat is depressing. Difficult question. I think not at the moment. I think, mm. you know, there's certainly, there are still rim brake bikes around. You know, you, you, you see people out riding who've got top bikes and they are still rim brake. But, you know, you, again, you look at the latest technology and it is all all, all disc now, really. And yeah. in a way, Shimano are dictating the market. You know, they've got the, they've got the, they've got the say, really. So, you know, the weight is coming down. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty small now. The margins are pretty small. Mm -hmm. Um, when you say pretty small, I know there's people out there that are going to be wanting a number. I reckon the margins between this bike, this this bike, and my rim brake bike, in the exactly same double ring setup, mm -hmm. will probably be 500, 400 grams, four to five. Wait, that, that's that's a lot, um, and that's the thing where this video is just chat. You don't make up 500 grams, half kilo of aerodynamic savings on a 23 kilometer climb. So yeah, I don't think it's um. Yeah, it's just chat, isn't it? Obviously, rim brake brakes are lighter, they're cheaper. That's the other thing that people don't chat about. Like, rim brake stuff is so cheap to make light in comparison to to the disc brake bike. Like, I had a 5.7 kilo rim brake bike, and I reckon it didn't cost more than £2,000. Um, and, like, that disc brake bike, the frame alone is probably, like, 4000 Like, it's just, it's just bananas how expensive it is to make a disc brake bike light. So, yeah, in conclusion, Andrew Feather's bike is pretty light. It's 5.7, and it's, like, full hill climb sub. Um, but he could be doing a lot more weight saving if he got mega mega keen uh, on the disc brake even and obviously if i was him just say chow chow sponsors i'm on the 4.9 kilo can because i've seen people get to 4.9 which is absolutely crazy but anyway cheers for watching hope you enjoy this video i'll see you in the next one